Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. As we continue to explore the various Praetors, today it's time for Ourobrask the Hidden, 5 mana 4 4, saying creatures you control have haste, and creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. So if you can get ahead and land an Ourobrask, it's going to make it very hard for the opponent to recover, especially if they rely on creatures to block. So for the most part our deck's just playing some of the best red cards ever seen on Arena, and then a few additional synergies include creatures with attack triggers, as they'll be able to attack right away with an Ourobrask in play. So cards like Itali, Primal Storm and Dracoseth you may not include in your average red deck, but they make more sense here. So let's take a look at all our creatures, starting at 1 mana with Beaumont Courier, which can provide extra card advantage if it manages to attack a few times. Goldhound counts as a treasure, so it can help us ramp, and has great synergy in particular with the Professional Facebreaker as a first strike creature that can easily attack past a blocker and make an extra treasure. We've got Kumano, which is great if we can follow it up with a creature on the following turn to get an extra plus one counter. And our two drops include Adversary, can maybe get back an instant or sorcery from the graveyard in the late game. Arcanist can also replay one drops, and maybe we can pump its power to get back more expensive spells. Got Karizef to make Ragavan when it attacks, so it can hit for 3. Radas Firebrand can maybe get rid of a blocker as well and get in for 3. Rahilda can provide extra card advantage if it connects with the opponent. We've got Robber of the Rich, which can also provide extra card advantage if it attacks. And then a Steamkin to pick up extra counters, which we can turn into extra mana as well. And then at 3 mana, there's Bone Crusher, although we're often using the 2 mana Stomp first. We've got Captain Lannery, which can attack and make a treasure token to help us ramp, maybe play Ourobrask on turn 4. There's a Comet Celebrant, which also shines alongside Ourobrask, as we can maybe play it and then attack right away, exerting the Celebrant and give us an extra attack step, which can often win us a game on the spot. There's a Fable of the Mirror Breaker to make extra treasures with the Shaman token, then Chapter 2, always good for a bit of card selection. And then at the Reflection of Kiki Jiki, we can also maybe activate the very same turn it transforms, thanks to the haste from Ourobrask. Then a Krenko also benefits from haste, being able to attack right away to make extra goblins and get extra plus one counters. Warboss also great even without haste, but with haste it's even better as we'll be able to mentor right away and make extra goblins at the same time. We've got Facebreaker which can make extra treasure tokens if we can hit the opponent. Stormseeker as another haste enabler in case Urobrask dies. It's still nice to have another way to enable some of our other creatures, but it's also totally fine by itself. And then as Queen another haste creature to make extra goblins. Got Anax, can help us recover from a board wipe by making Seder tokens, and of course combines very nicely with Ember Cleave, which we're of course playing as a mono red deck. Phoenix of Ash can be replayed out of the graveyard a few times, thanks to Escape as a hasty flyer. And then a Goblin Chain Whirler, great against any one toughness creatures, and we've got a few combos with it, like Torbrain, to potentially deal 3 damage to all creatures and players, and even Planeswalkers as well. Torbrain just great in any red deck, as we all know. Phoenix, another nice threat that can keep coming back from the graveyard, so we'll require 2 removal spells or an exile effect to deal with it permanently. Defiler of Instincts, another new addition from Dominaria, which can help us cast our red spells at a discount if we pay 2 life and can deal additional damage as well. We've got the Blazing Sky is another fine 4-drop that can also benefit from haste. And then Delina is pretty similar to the Comot Celebrant, where we typically want to play Ourobrask first, so Delina can attack with haste and then start making copies of our creatures. And then at 5 mana, there's Chaos Balor, which has great abilities when it gets to attack or dies, including dealing 2 damage to all the opponent's creatures. We've got Glorybringer, which can deal 4 damage to a non-dragon when it exerts. Then Goldspan, also a great way to generate extra mana with the treasures. Now back to the original version, and no longer the nerfed alchemy version. There's Terror of the Peaks, also benefits from haste, can deal extra damage if we play more creatures. And then Ourobrask Heretic Praetor, also very good as a 4-4 with haste, that can provide extra card advantage by exiling our top card, and forces the opponent to play off the top, otherwise the exiled card goes to waste. And then at 6 mana, as we mentioned, there's a Tally to play extra cards off the top for free. There's Ancient Copper Dragon to make extra treasure if it manages to connect. And then Dracoseth Maw of Flames is pretty expensive at 7 mana, but if it ever gets to attack, it's usually game over. And then looking at our non-creature spells, we've got a whole section dedicated to burn spells. At 1 mana, there's Flame Blast Bolts, Play with Fire, 
and Shock to deal 2 damage. Sheev and Fire can deal 4 damage if we kick it, and then Frostbind can deal 3 to a creature or Planeswalker if we control enough Snow Permanence, and then of course Lightning Bolt is what every burn spell strives to be, and then we also have Strangle, 3 damage at Sorcery Speed to a creature or Planeswalker, Got a braid which can deal three to a creature or destroy an artifact. Lightning strike is just a worse lightning bolt, but still pretty good. And then molten impact can deal four damage and potentially deal excess damage whenever we cast our next instant or sorcery. And then I'm also playing one by force which can destroy X target artifacts, since a lot of decks in Historic Brawl do use artifact to ramp, so we can often destroy more than one artifact with it. Could also play Smelt at one mana, which does have better synergy with the Dreadhorde Arcanist, since by force doesn't really work too well with it, but I'm going with by force since it typically has more upside. And then we've got some ramp artifacts ourselves to hopefully play Ourobrasca turn ahead of schedule with Arcane Signet, Cold Seal Heart, Guardian Idol, and Mindstone at two mana. Then Chandra can also make extra mana with the plus one. We've got Hazard's Monument to discount our red creature spells and help us loot. Heraldic Banner makes a mana while increasing power by one. Celestis gives us a bit of card selection too. And then Chandra can deal four damage to creatures and make mana with a plus one and Key to the Archive can also ramp by two, and maybe find a card from its powerful spellbook. And then we've got Embercleave as another staple in any red deck, as well as Sky Sovereign, which can also benefit from haste, dealing three to a creature or planeswalker when it enters and when it attacks. And then finally, Fiery Emancipation as another nice finisher. If we have a few creatures in play, we can now triple their damage output, also good with some of the direct burn spells. And then a mana base includes Faceless Haven to go with our Snowlands as well as Frostbite. And then the Crucible can make some 1-1 one -one tokens. We've got Den as another creature land and Castle Embereth to pump the team. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. On the draw, facing Yarok. And yeah, I think we've got a Keeper. Goldhound into Signet can set up turn 3 Orbrask. And then Celebrant for extra attack steps. Maybe an Itali for value. Could be fun. Opponent off to a slower start. And we have multiple Aura Brasks to choose from now. Rejuvenator. That happens. Can potentially block Celebrant, so... Kind of annoying, but uh, I think we still give Commander Ourobrask a try here. And hope they chum block. Alright, they do. So that opens up Combat Celebrants, Exert. Just a Risen Reef for now. So we can go Celestus plus Combat Celebrants, or I can just play another Ourobrask and then wait on Combat Celebrants, but then the Risen Reef will be able to block it. So sure, we'll go with Celestus plus Celebrant. Exert attack. And attack again. Your opponent's at 12, and next turn we can smash in with Itali. Now a hostage taker is problematic. Steals Ourobrask. But we'll just send it back to the command zone. So hostage taker not the best at killing commanders. Can play Itali, but uh, it's not going to attack right away. Could go for Ourobrask. And Stomp, killing the Risen Reef, or we can wait and see what else they play. And then, if our opponent plays Yarok, next turn, what's my plan? Can I guess attack into it, finish it off with a Stomp? So yeah, close call. Could also just replay Ourobrask, maybe that's even better. So Yarok comes into play tapped. And then Itali is going to be a lot more impactful too. Ah, 
hostage taker attacks, so probably implies a sweeper's incoming. Meat hook massacre for four. Alright, we'll follow up with hasty Orobrask. And can play Steamkin first. Bonus at eight, but now they can maybe take over with uh, Yarok. Gross Spiral they could still cast alongside it. It's going to be a Gloom Shrieker to get back. Maybe Hostage Taker. Yep. And that's going to exile Ourobrask, I'm sure. Nope, it goes for Steamkin. Find a robber. And a land, so... What if I play robber and attack with both? I can finish off Hostage Taker with Stomp. And if they don't make me, I can uh, still play Itali. Sure, that sounds good. There was also Faceless Haven to consider. Alright, so we'll finish off Hostage Taker. And play Bone Crusher. Scarab God Exiled, that's a good one. Although I think that leaves him dead on board if that's the only play, since we can activate Faceless Haven. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. So Urabrask Tribal got it done here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Angrath, a red-black discard sacrifice. And we have a decent start. Turn three, hoping for Captain Lannery to start making treasure. Virus Beetle makes me discard. I think Phoenix can probably go. Can always get it back later. And hang on to my removal in case we need to answer a key creature. Can also deal damage to planeswalkers with it. Drax and Arena, alright, that's a good one. For now, just play Captain Lannery and we'll be able to connect. And then we gotta try and punish. The life loss from Frex and Arena. Opponent takes two. So Angrath can potentially kill Captain Landry with a minus. Looks like they're sacrificing Beetle, maybe? Nope, just under Braid. That's fine. We got our treasure, which means we can play Ourobrask here. And a Valky. Yeah, they can take a look here. Steal Glorybringer. I guess the problem now is they will be able to transform Valky if I go for Ourobrask and then kill with the uh, Glorybringer trigger. So we might want to go for a different approach, which could involve Chandra making mana, killing Valky. Yeah, I think I like that, since Chandra doesn't die to Angrath, at least. Alright, so we'll play Chandra. And I don't want to minus, because then we put Chandra in harm's way with the Virus Beetle attacking. Don't want to be in that position where I have to kill a Virus Beetle. So we'll just add mana. And then strangle to keep the instant speed shock, perhaps. Kill Valky. Get our glory bringer back. And pass. And then if Angrath makes me discard, it will go up to 5 loyalty. Might still be fine discarding a mountain, so shock plus a glory bringer or Orbrask can uh, finish it off. Sadly, a kicked thirst deals with Chandra. Okay. We're done here. 
Now between Ourobrask and Glorybringer, it's a close call. I think Ourobrask first. Because they may be sandbagging a creature that they don't want to expose to the Glorybringer, and they're just waiting for me to kill this Virus Beetle. Opponent Trumps. And then a Hasty Torbrand could also represent a lot of extra damage. You can play the Shock to deal 4 with it as well. Opponent down to 20. There's land 5. So we're well set up to deal with Angrath. But we'll see what else they can bring to the table. And if the opponent kills Urbrask, we probably let it go to the graveyard to make it easier to escape Phoenix. And then once we exile Urbrask with escape, it will go back to the command zone anyways. Opponent's got their own Chandra. That's fair. Kills Urbrask. I think I still hang on to the shock. And then, as we mentioned, can go for Phoenix, can go with a more mana efficient Glory Bringer, keep land in hand to discard. We have options. Yeah, let's go with the Phoenix. Take out Chandra. And pass. And then if they want to minus Angrath to kill Phoenix, that's fine by me. It's going to be a Massacre for three instead. Phoenix down. Heraldic Banner, could just replay Ourobrask now, which I don't mind. Hit for four and set up our hasty Torbran. Opponent down to 14. So yeah, if we can get them low enough to the point where Rex and Arena will kill them. We just need to make sure the opponent cannot deal 25 damage before that happens. Cut clean answer to Horobrask, sadly. So I send it back to the graveyard once again to make it easier to escape. Alright, there's another Horobrask. Opponent could have played, Angrath did not, so they probably have instant speed removal at the ready. So. What does that mean for me? Probably don't want to animate Den of the Bugbear. Glorybringer feels bad. So maybe it is still Ourobrask. And then I'm unable to double spell. Could go Banner plus Torbrain. Although I would really like to shock while Torbrain's in play. So Ourobrask it is. And the hangar mauling to kill it. Okay. Well, we've been able to hang on to Glorybringer. We'll see if our opponent finally presents a target for it. As they fall to 13. And a thought distortion. That was certainly unexpected. Got a shock in response. And now Acquisitions Experts can have my Torbrain keep Glorybringer. And then Glorybringer can attack. And I don't think we exert, just hit them for four. Opponents down to six. Upside of killing Expert is that then becomes a bigger threat. But uh, this way we keep an extra attacker if they don't answer it. Expert attacks implies maybe a sweeper. Blood on the snow. Get back Expert, but we're empty handed. Can get back Chandra, that's probably better. Although, can they deal with Phoenix? 
which we can escape again. So there's Chandra. Finds a land. Itali is definitely a fun one. Or I can escape a Phoenix of Ash and then pump it to essentially kill the opponent here in their upkeep with the Phyrexian Arena. That's gonna be better. Okay, that seems to be working. Opponent down to one. So yeah, we'll see if they die to Phyrexian Arena. And they do. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Shana. So a life gain deck could be tough, but we have a decent hand. Turn two Signet, hopefully. Turn three Chandra. You can always plus to play Robber afterwards. And then lines up nicely against Shana as well. Okay, so we're still on track. Opponent does keep up two mana, could just be a growth spiral for all we know, so I'm still jamming Chandra. And a Dovin's Veto, perfect answer here. Okay. So now, if they have a counter spell, I would rather get Urabrask countered than Goldspan. So that's an option, could also double spell Annex and Robber of the Rich, which may be even better. We actually progress our board somewhat. Now I guess Annex versus Captain Lannery is also an interesting question. Maybe Lannery is still better. And that will likely bait out a counter. Humiliation instead. Removing the robber's abilities. And a counter spell. Okay, lots of interaction early on here. Solve the equation, might get a Swords to Plowshares. Get Supreme Verdict instead. Okay, so we want to leave some leftovers. So I think going Urobrask attack is fine, and then we can follow up with a Goldspan. There's a Verdict. Goldspan will make it pretty easy to replay Orobrask. In fact, could play a Reckless Stormseeker here. Or maybe Annex is better. So we have a bit of Sweeper protection. And then next turn, can uh, play Stormseeker. Time wipe, yep. Another sweeper. At least we make some 1-1s. One -ones. And then now I can play Ourobrask again. Bone falls to 5. Shana comes into play tapped. I guess they can sack the food token to gain life. But our opponent concedes. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing Minsk and Boo, red, green, and my hand has potential. Fable into Chandra would be a nice start. I mean, four mana Chandra. Chamberlain could maybe clean up some mana creatures. It's going to be an explorer for now. Let's get this Fable going. Dress to Kill can be discarded, maybe Steamkin at this point. Goblin and Archimancer, definitely worth taking out. And then a Braid for one mana, kills our Shaman. Okay, so... I think I stick to the plan, discard Chandra and Steamkin. Our land is good. So we'll just uh, play our Planeswalker, take out an Archimancer, so we don't need to face the opponent's Planeswalker next turn. And then the extra mana will come in handy. Spellbreaker can finish off our Planeswalker. 
at least we'll eventually be able to combine our reflection with a chain roller as well which is a good combo good with phoenix too so for now do i want to play a key to the archive or play something like rekindling phoenix if i key next turn i can double spell makes it easier to play orobrask and yeah, we'll try this and a Lightning Helix or Doomblade are both appealing. If they destroy a key, I won't be able to play it, so that's a drawback. So maybe I still discard it anyway, since the cards in my hand are pretty good. So four mana for the opponents. Foretells a card. What could this be? And a back to nature just to destroy my reflection. Fair enough. So, Ourobrask is my entire turn. Could play the Heretic Praetor as well. That way if they want to play Minsk and Boon next turn, they may not be able to if they exile something that's not a land. Although I can see the advantage of Ourobrask the Hidden first to make sure their creatures are tapped. So yeah, close call. There's also the option of Chain Warlord plus Bone Crusher kill Spellbreaker, which is kind of decent too. As it doesn't seem like our opponent's presenting any one toughness creatures. And then we don't need to worry about our opponents pumping the Spellbreaker with uh, Timeless Heroes. Opponent just casting a Bone Crusher. Must have been a recent draw, otherwise it could have answered Reflection as well, and a Blizzard Brawl. Okay, that works. I think for now we'll go Phoenix plus Bone Crusher, since none of the Urbrasks have great attacks into the Bone Crusher here. Opponent passes, Quee the draw. So step one, probably just attack, see what happens. Opponent trades, so that clears a path for Urbrask, which I'm happy to play alongside Guardian Idol. Transformation will permanently deal with Urbrask now. But we've got another haste creature or two coming up, so it doesn't matter too much. So yeah, opponent must have had a pretty controlling draw. With uh, Blizzard Brawl, Back to Nature, Bone Crusher, Transformation, which is probably why they weren't developing their board as much. But yeah, opponent explodes, can have a look at the Exiled card, the Battle Mammoth. Which they weren't able to cast in time. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Clothus, red, green. And my hand is not great, especially with Phoenix getting exiled by Clothus. No ramp, no removal. This is, I guess, a little bit better. Not exciting, but Goldhound can help us ramp, and we've got ways to deal with early mana creatures, perhaps. Adversary, I'm happy enough taking out. Okay, we'll hit for one, and then I'll wait to see what else they play before making a move. Can Bolt Adversary keep Frostbite to deal three damage later? And then Banner will still set up turn for either Glorybringer or Ourobrask. It's gonna be a Flames of the Firebrands. Okay. And then Banner still keeps up Frostbite. Rekindling Phoenix. I would have liked to exile, but I guess we only dealt two damage to it. Now I can, of course, Frostbite now, untap, and then exert Glorybringer, for instance. Or we can use Molten Impact, and then 
I can maybe frostbite something else and then with excess damage finish off the egg. I think we'll keep it simple, just kill Phoenix with frostbite, untap and then Glorybringer. Play with fire also an option but this is more mana efficient. Okay. So next turn probably play Orobrask. And yeah, the mere notion of Orobrask coming down our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the first sliver. My hand seems fine. Turn two can decide between Firebrand and Cold Steel Heart. Bolt can deal with an early sliver. And then turn for Orobrask, ideally. And Amber Cleave the turn after. Alright, let's go with Firebrand since I don't have a 4 drop I need to play. That way we can start dealing damage a bit sooner. We'll follow Haven, sadly, we cannot interact with. Uro for ramp. I could actually bolt so Uro gets exiled instead of potentially coming back. Yeah, given how this game's going, I think I, I like that play. Don't expect too many creatures will be able to kill with bolt anyway. And then time for Ourobrask. And hope there's no board wipe. Maybe they just play a first sliver, their creatures come into play tapped, that's fine. We can get a nice hidden with Embercleave. Time warp for an extra turn at least. They didn't have a big board presence to leverage. And a commit to deal with Urbrask. Do I want to put it back in my deck? I guess so. For now. I can attack an Ember Cleave, which is probably better than playing Karizev. Bone falls to 10. Also have the option of pumping the Firebrand, which could potentially give us lethal, especially if we prevent something from blocking. It's going to be a Relic of Legends first. And a Fateful Absence to deal with Firebrand. Ourobras goes to hand. And we can run it out. Hit for four. And then we're just a land away from a hasty Dracoseth. Opponent looking more like a five color control deck than a sliver tribal deck. Wrath of God will clear the board. Okay. Send that back to the command zone. And then replaying Ourobrask would give us lethal, so it seems better than Dracoseth. And that seems to be working. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the Sentinel Worm Dragons. And Glorybringer is going to be kind of ineffective in this matchup, as it cannot deal damage to opposing dragons, but this hand still worth keeping, especially if we can ramp out an early Chandra. All right, at least now we can go for Fable on three, which can maybe discard Glorybringer. Yeah, I think I like that more than anything else. Discard maybe Kumano Glorybringer. Although Squee also doesn't line up all that well against the Scale Singer. Opponent using Boseju here, at least that finds a land. So now we can Chandra, maybe just kill the Singer. Or I could go Chandra, make mana, play Signet, play 
Kumano. That's a decent sequence as well. I guess we'll start by attacking with uh, Shaman. Put on blocks. Could also go for Celestus instead of Signet, but don't want to waste my treasure. And then now I could play a 5 5 Glorybringer or Ourobrask next turn. And we've got a ton of different mana sources between artifacts, treasures, Chandra, which is a good place to be. Chandra takes one. Which also clears a path for Squee. So let's say we make mana. See if Ourobrask resolves, may get countered. And then I can still play Squee. Alright. And then playing Ourobrask before Squee also plays around an opposing Glorybringer dealing for damage. So I think that makes sense. But yeah, opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Clement, Novice Acolyte, the blue-white variant. So, turns into a 3-4 with Vigilance. Can seek an online permanent cards. Okay, well, uh, we've got a Keeper. Bowman Courier into Rahilda on turn 2. Can start generating... An advantage over time. Squeeze good too. Playing Firebrand to prevent Clement from blocking was also an option. But uh, Bowman Courier can stay put for a little bit. So they can eat a 1 1, take 4. And then Rahilda triggers. And there's a safeguard. Exile target non artifact creature. So it flickers it. And enters with a shield counter on it. It's going to be a Cloudkin Seer as a 3-2, thanks to Clement. And then I'll attack with Squee and Rahilda. Wait on Bowman Courier for a little bit longer. Put on double blocks. So, I can let first strike damage happen and then cast a safeguard. And then probably killing Cloudkin over Clement, so is that true? I guess Clement could specialize and turn into a 3-4 uh, here. So we'll put Clement first. So let first strike damage happen, go full control just in case. And then safeguard. And then we can still firebrand. Okay, that was a sweet turn. Next turn, Urobrask. And then set up a hasty Balor. And then once we're empty-handed, we can always attack with Courier and sacrifice it. This attack does not bode well. Maybe a Settler Wreckage in our future, maybe a Wandering Emperor. And I'll leave the Courier back. More likely to be a Wandering Emperor, but uh, don't want to take too many risks. Right, the Restoration Angel instead, that one's good too. Can flicker Cloudkin. Still a 3-2. And now they can ambush. So had I played Urobrask, we would have played around Resto Angel very easily, since it would enter tapped, and so does the Cloudkin. At least this is still a trade, and we just remove a shield counter. So it could have been worse. Okay, 
And I'll play Orbrask now. I guess there was no reason not to play Orbrask first. Unless we maybe wanted to pump the Firebrand. Micromancer can maybe get a... Swords to Plashers. Yep. Thanks, I'll Orbrask. Switches back to daytime. Okay, what's next for us? Could play Balor. Could play Warboss Attack with all. And they're unlikely to block Beaumont Courier. But if they do, I'm fine discarding my hand. I guess at that point, maybe Balor Attack with all is better. They'll probably block Rahilda. And then we have a little bit more time to leverage Beaumont Courier. Exclusion Mage to Bounce Balor. Nope, Bounce and Courier. Then I'll sacrifice it. Three cards probably worth more than a uh, Legion War Boss. And now a Spellbinder, still with a bonus from the start of the game. Can make my Chain Warlord more expensive. But we will still be able to attack with Balor, which can deal two to the opponent's creatures. And then uh, Chain Warlord can deal a third point of damage. Play with Fire can finish off Restoration Angel. So the opponent's board's gonna disintegrate here. And we should be able to kill them. So play lands, play Chain Warlord. And then attack with all. Can deal two to myself, make two treasure, and then two damage to the opponent's creatures. Which will get two more power, but uh, not for very long. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the Augur of Agonies. Asper card draw. My hand isn't great, but could do some fun things with uh, Delina, maybe, and Celebrant. The Filer set up Ourobrask, and then could play a 3-mana Delina and a 2-mana Celebrant. Okay, play Arcanist for now. Don't have any 1-mana spells to go with it at the moment, so not going to be too sad if it dies. And then I should probably play Celebrants, even though it's better if I keep it with haste. Have to be realistic too here. Okay, Celebrant resolved. And a Kaito shows up. Gonna make a ninja. Okay, Lightning Strike could be an answer, but uh, for now Defiler. And then just attack with Arcanist, can eventually kill the ninja with the Defiler's ability. So hopefully we get to untap with it. Plan probably still to play Orbrask. Four mana for Midnight Clock. Leaving two. Kind of draws. Well, we can definitely do some damage with a Comet Celebrant too here. Chart, of course, to draw. Okay, opponent appears to be tapped out. Now, do we go all in with Ourobrask into a potential board wipe, or do I play it a little safer? If I go Heraldic Banner, I can actually replay the Lightning Strike with Arcanist too. So, we are dealing quite a bit of damage. So, let's try that. Lightning Strike can go face. Opponent might have a Pact of Negation in hand. <laughs> and our opponent explodes. So yeah, what would happen here? We attack, exerting Celebrant, hit for 12 plus another 3. So that's 15, 
and then Arcanist and Defiler get to attack again, and I'm pretty sure our opponent's just dead. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Rada, red-green, a land synergy, and my hand could use a 3-mana play, maybe some ramp, but uh, the individual cards are very powerful. Turn 1 Fabled Passage. So probably means they don't have a ton of landfall creatures in hand, otherwise that might be the type of card they want to hang on to. Delina could be fun once we get Orobrask down. And the Captain Lannery is a perfect 3-drop here. Although might run into Rada if they've got the red mana, they don't, just a Field of Ruin and the Garrox Uprising. Kind of surprised they fetched for a forest with Fabled Passage if they don't have red mana. Maybe they have the red mana, they just want to wait on playing Rada. There's an Into the North. Finally gets a mountain. And then now, not disliking Chandra, make mana, play Adversary. And that way, next turn, I'll be able to play Orbrass more easily. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, missing that uh, turn 3 Rada to actually block Captain Lannery was a big deal, although we always could have sacrificed the treasure to actually trade for Rada, since it only has first rank in the opponent's turn. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Prosper, which can be a very controlling deck. Our hand's actually not bad with uh, Gold Hounds synergizing with Facebreaker to make extra treasure tokens, and then Menace away to attack past the Death Toucher, which can otherwise stop lots of our early aggression. So we'll see if we get to keep our creatures in play for a while. Not interested in playing a turn 2 Facebreaker, better to keep the Gold Hound to actually enable it. And then a turn to Cold Seal Heart is fine. Alright, Shield Breaker, perfect answer to Gold Hound, although would have answered the Cold Steel Heart as well. So now Torbrand might be the preferred play, although Phase Breaker can still attack past Prosper at least. Plunder to make me discard. If that happens, discard a land. Didn't think I want to discard again. And play a phase breaker. Pass it back. And then next turn, if they play Prosper, Torbran into Strangle will take care of it since it'll deal 5 damage. There it is. Lightning Bolt also works, but we'll keep that one for later. And hit for four. Make a treasure, next turn play Ourobrask. And still have a Lightning Bolt at the ready, thanks to the treasure. Okay, that was a big turn. Five mana. And it's going to be a Storm Kiln Artist. Probably fine to bolt that as soon as we get the chance. Which would be now, although I guess I'm fine to untap first. Although it would enable potential Revolt on Fatal Push if we kill it in my turn. Although they could kill Phase Breaker regardless. And Torbrand, so... Sure, we'll untap. And then... Yeah, could bolt it, could just play Orbrask and Smash. Could also play Beaumont Courier, although that one doesn't get the bonus from Torbrain, so that would require me to kill Artist, which I can do both. So we'll just play Orbrask and attack. Damage happens. Bone falls to 7, so Lightning Bolt represents 5 damage here. 
Probably fine to keep courier in hand in case of a board wipe. And there's Prosper, opponents tapped out. So pretty sure they're dead here, especially with Prosper coming into play tapped. Alright, so good to see Monorat, Ourobrask in action. And yeah, the deck's pretty decent if it can get ahead and stay ahead. Not the best when coming back from behind, since Ourobrask especially only really works if you get it in play before the opponent plays something big to get in the way. So in that regard, it's not maybe the most consistent deck, especially on the draw, but it is also the type of deck where you can pretty easily switch out the commander for some other red legendary, because for the most part we're just playing the best red cards available. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Stay tuned for more Praetors coming up. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.